Wow, uh, this is something that maybe you can help with. But a couple from Oxford are urgently seeking a life-saving bone marrow transplant for their two-year-old son. I was looking on the, the website that they've uh, made for their little boy, Ali, last night, and you just so feel for them. They've searched all the international donor registers, but no luck. Andrew and Judy Kim have gone in touch with us here at BBC Radio Oxford to try and raise awareness of their desperate search. Their son, Alistair, or Ali, as he's known, and, and very cute he looks as well on the, on the website, has a condition that means his immune system doesn't work properly and has been in hospital since February. The bone marrow transplant would be a potential cure. Judy is living with him at Great Ormond Street and we've been asking her how Ali, Ali is actually coping with the waiting game. When he doesn't have a fever, he's like a regular little boy. And so it's kind of amusing, I think, for the nurses cause to see a boy that's so well uh, when he doesn't have his fever because then we have to chase him around with the IV medicine stand sometimes. <laughs> I mean, he's not really talking. I guess boys are a bit slower with their talking, but he does understand just about everything, and he tells us everything he wants to with his pointing. And what's it like for you, Judy? You're living at the hospital with him at the moment. What's life been like for you since you've been at Great Ormond Street? Um, it's quite hard, I have to say. Uh, I definitely... Um, I guess I could relate it to having a newborn infant almost because uh, the way you live your your night and day is not really defined um, you get woken up so much in the night to do medicines or to take vital signs and it's a bit hard even though London's not so far from Oxford it's hard because then we don't see the rest of the family except maybe on the weekend um, like his older five-year-old brother and his dad. Andrew is uh, Ali's dad I'm going to speak to him now. Uh, Andrew, thank you for coming on the programme this morning, just hearing Judy dealing with the day-to-day -day at Great Ormond Street there. Uh, help us all understand about this condition that, that Ali's got. Sure. Uh, thanks for having us on uh, the show. Um, Ali has a condition known as chronic granulomatosis disorder, or CGD. And um, like you said, it's basically the immune system doesn't work properly. So when you have a bacteria or a fungal infection, um, your blood cells or your white blood cells would normally just kind of eat those bacteria up and prevent anything further from happening. But in CGD, uh, they don't, they're not equipped properly to actually do that. So they might, they might kind of attach to the bacteria, but then they don't do anything. And the bacteria is then able to continue to grow and, and uh, you know, cause disorder with, with the rest of your body. Mm, I, I, I noticed on your website you, you, you proudly say he's 100% Korean descent. Uh, has that actually made it more difficult to find a match? Yes, uh, definitely. I mean, just proportionally, you know, population of Korean people out there is much smaller than, you know, say, Caucasian. But um, I think with Eastern Asians in general, uh, that there aren't that many people on the registry. So... I think someone at Anthony Nolan told me that out of the 800 or so, 800,000 registered donors here in the UK, only 0.5% of them are of Eastern Asian descent. And um, his best chance for a match will be someone from Eastern Asian descent. So if you find a match, that's game done, is it? He, he, he's cured and, and thank you and he can get on with his life. <laughs> uh, I mean, hopefully... Uh, Generally, when you're looking for a match, you're trying to find what they call a 10 on 10. So there's 10 markers that they're trying to match um, to prevent rejection. Now, even if we find a 100% match, uh, this 10 on 10, uh, when they do the procedure, there's a couple of kind of risky steps. The first is they have to do chemotherapy to prepare his body. Um, there's always a chance that that kind of goes awry and um, things could you know, become fatal. And then secondarily, uh, when they do the actual bone marrow transplant, again, even if it's a 100% match, there is sometimes this chance for rejection. It's a 100% match only of these 10 markers. You know, there's thousands of other things um, on those cells that are foreign from one person to, to another person. But um, So there's still a chance that it could get rejected and, um, you know, he'd be back to square one. Now, you've, you've been through all the international donor registers, no luck there. I mean, you, you've come to us uh, and 
Yeah, who knows? Because it is, it's the one chance, isn't it? The, it's the one person that could be the, the answer to this. If somebody listening wants to register and, and might be a match, what do they do? Uh, I mean, exactly like you said, it, it, it can be a one in a million match. Um, if somebody would like to register, they can go to anthonynolan.org um, and they can register there and they'll send you a free kit in the post. Um, for Anthony Nolan, it's actually just what they call spit test. You just spit into a little tiny tube, send it back in a prepaid envelope, and they'll do the analysis at their laboratories. Um, there's another organization called dkms.org.uk. Um, there's just like a Q-tip. You just kind of uh, rub it around inside your mouth and you send that back to them. And again, they do the analysis and they'll let you know if you're a match for Ali or if you're a match for, you know, there's 14,000 other people in the world that are looking for bone marrow donors. So you may not help Ali, but you could help save somebody else's life. As I say, looking on your website that you, you've made for, for your little boy and, and just hearing Judy and, and just chatting to you now, Andrew, I mean, you, you sound very stoic and you sound like you've, you've you almost got a, a sort of British stiff upper lip about this, but this must be really hard for, for you as a family. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it, has been, it has been tough. I mean, the, the family's been separated. Uh, I think Judy said, you know, Ali seems to be pretty normal day to day, but... If you look inside of his body, I mean, he has multiple abscesses that have formed on his liver, for instance, because he already has an infection. So there's there's a lot of things going on inside of him. Um, the doctors have told him he's high risk. He's he's critical. That's why he's been put to the top of the list. Um, if he can find a match, he'll immediately go into procedure. So it, that, that kind of weighs on you. It, it's always on your mind. You try and live life as normal, especially for our five-year-old son, Micah. You know, you want to make things as normal as possible, but it's it's always hanging over you and kind of just draining. I mean, for us, but, you know, especially for Judy, because she's in hospital every day, seeing all this, you know, going through kind of it firsthand, face-to-face. Andrew, thanks so much for coming on. And who knows uh, that, uh, you know, it just takes, as you say, one person listening and, and they might be that magic match and uh, and then Ali can can get on and, and, and start living his life and, and that would be fantastic and, and what it would mean for your family as well. But uh, we really appreciate that, Andrew, and, and we genuinely, everyone listening, I'm sure, wishes you and the whole family the very best. Great. Thank you so much. I mean, again, this is what we say on our website. It's, it's a story of hope. We still have hope. We are positive and we know that you are that hope. You know, the person out there listening who might register and who might be the one to save Ali's life, you are that hope. Andrew Kim, thank you very much. All the very, very best. We're going to talk to the Anthony Nolan Trust after eight on the programme. They...